This is not a lightsaber. The last review of the Akuma Battle Cat. Now I will tell you guys this up front. I am with Akuma. And they do have new catfish rods coming out. The catfish slayer rods. And I tell you what. I do like them. I do want to get some myself. And they are unique. Stay tuned. I will do videos or podcasts in the future about those rods. Now, the Akuma Battle Cat, man, this is a very, very unique rod. I will go as far as saying that this is the most unique catfish rod the industry has ever seen. And I'm doing this review as it's probably being discontinued. As always with any company, when you have something new coming in, something old will probably be replaced. And they are having really good sales on these right now. So if you want to get your hands on a very unique catfish rod, I'd buy it now. And I'm talking, it's right now it's July 29th, 2024. So if you're listening to this or watching this sometime in the future, you're going to have to look for used battle caps. Now, why is this unique? Well, look what I got in my hands. This is the handle. It's a two-piece rod, and the blank goes into the end of the actual handle. I mean, I let me know in the comments below if you've seen any other, you know, fishing rod that's been built like this. I've never seen it before myself until the Battle Cat, where, you know, the rod blank goes into the handle of, you know, the, you know, the whole thing when it's a two, you know, two piece rod. Most of the time, you know, it's cutting like, you know, in the middle of the rod. So that, that makes it really unique. And I tell you what, when you have it in here, it, uh, it makes it difficult to remove, especially if you leave it in there over time. So it's not going to come out when you're fighting a fish. It never has for me. I've never heard of anyone having it like come out or break or anything like that. These have been very good rods. And I mean, they're premium. They, they over-engineered these rods. I mean, they put EVA foam on the front for when you're battling a fish. You know, EVA foam is easier to hold, but they put a cork handle on it, which, from what I've seen, makes it easier to come out of the rod holder. Now, you can get EVA foam ones out of the rod holders, too. They stick a little bit more when a fish has your rod torqued down. It's still removable, but, you know, they... they they really, you know, engineered this really uniquely. So, cork handle, EVA, you know, grip, which is really cool. Now, some of you might complain about the plastic or com com composite or whatever the real seat is. However, it is a high-end Pacific Bay real seat. And, I mean, I've never heard, I mean, unless you want, you know, you're going for... 500 pound grouper with this rod I don't see a catfish ever you know breaking this and I've never heard of anybody having problems out of at least these rods or even others I mean I know a lot of manufacturers have moved to metal but you don't necessarily need it and you know just to give you a little comfort it's got metal straps on it on what locks down onto your reel So it just gives you a little peace of mind of holding your reel down onto, you know, this. And it's got, you know, it's got two different screws. It's got a plastic or a composite screw and a metal one to hold it all in place. So, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a good design. I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but you might be able to read Pacific Bay on that. Now, here's something I could ask you guys about. You know, I could have asked Akuma myself. I tried to not, like, overload them with questions. And 
you know, as an actual question, you know, on the bottom of the barrel, because I don't use fighting gear. Like if you're fighting like a, you know, 500 pound shark, you have your rod butt in like a fighting gear, like a fighting belt or whatever. I don't know the exact name of them. And my question is, is that why the butt is designed like that? It's got like indentions in it. Is that to like lock into something? Leave a comment below if you know. But, you know, it's another, you know, detail that they added to this. And there you go. <laughs> like I said, not a lightsaber, but it does have a rod blade that comes out of it. Glad I don't have my fan going. I would have just taken the tip off, which would happen with any fishing rod. Well, it might bounce on this one. I mean, it's pretty, pretty stout, but... I'm not going to test it. But there's, you know, there's the part that goes into the blank. It was right in there. And it's pretty tight, you know, really tight fit. You should see, I can make noises with it. And then it is a heavy rod blank. So basically, this is stiff. This will not bend until you get to maybe right about here. And another like magical thing they added to this, I've always called it like magic that the developers or whatever did when they, you know, built this rod. But this tip, I mean, it has a very, very sensitive tip. You can see when channel catfish or anything else are biting. And, I mean, I think it might actually help with circle hooks. Helps, you know, when it loads up, it, it actually gives enough movement to help get the circle hook to actually hook. I like medium heavy rods, right? And with the new catfish slayer rods... You know, they are introducing medium heavy rods. Well, when you're looking at this tip, this is what you would expect on a medium heavy rod. Something that actually hooks the fish easier on, on a circle hook. Now, I know the action of the tip is different than the action of the backbone. Most medium heavy backbones... You know, they get to having tips as slow or fast as this. I mean, I'm just going by experience, by what I've seen with my own eyes. Companies are wild with what they call medium heavies, heavies, mediums. I've seen medium heavy rods that are like the, the mediums. They are so flexible all the way down to the handle. I wonder why they call them, you know, medium heavy. Uh, some people like that, and, you know, if it's a strong enough blank, then, yeah, that's a medium heavy. It's just, it bends more than most medium heavies. And heavies, they're the ones that don't bend. Ugh. And I just put a lot of pressure there, and, you know, you see, I mean, maybe just a tiny bit of bend, but not really. I mean, that is a very, very strong blank. So it goes from super strong to, you know, flimsy. And that, you know, I like medium heavies. They do bend most of the way down, and they're good at circle hooks. And some heavies, you know, I don't know. You just have to make your own mind up. Look at other videos of how each rod bends. And, you know, the tips... Really, having a loose tip like this or, you know, more flexible tip helps with circle hooks. And if you have a broomstick, you know, maybe that's a J-hook rod? I'm, I'm all ears, you know, just go ahead and leave a comment below and correct me if I'm wrong with some of this stuff. But this is definitely heavy class. I have no idea what they classify like the tip. But I do know that it is very flexible. Which I keep saying over and over again. So I don't know if that will show up on the camera. Trying to show you the numbers. BCC 762H. They make more than just seven and a half footers. 
They make eight footers, nine footers. They make spinning versions of this. You know, this is not really a casting rod. I mean, it's or distance casting rod. This is not a distance casting rod. They've got actual stainless steel eyes, and you, they're really just to help with braid. And you're chunking big baits. I mean, you you really don't distance cast chunk bait. I mean, I know some people claim they can do a country mile or 100 yards or whatever when they cast out their big baits that, you know, are as big as your hand. And then when you see them casting that same bait at a certain buoy that's 100 yards out, you realize that they're 20 yards short of that 100 yard distance. And they're casting big baits. The big baits they're casting, you know, you can cast them only as far as you can cast them. If you take a little bait and, say, a small 3-ounce, 2-ounce, 3-ounce sinker, and you do like my buddy Clint does and do some type of surf cast, 100 yards, easy. 200 yards, possible. But you're using smaller baits, you know... And heavier, you know, well, the bait's going, the, the weight is definitely going to be heavier than the bait, but you have a piece of shrimp with a three ounce sinker. If you have them close together to, to prevent, like, you know, too much twirling, 200 yards would be easy to do. And spinning reel, you know, you want to do something like that in a spinning reel. If you want to chunk a big old shark bait out there, you either throw at 80 yards or less, or get your kayak out and kayak out you know 200 yards these are bait chunking rods they're for the bigger baits this one's rated one to eight ounces and i've had people tell me that they've chunked out bigger than eight ounces i know i have and it's you know if i put like a you know an entire skipjack on that's half a pound I'm only getting like a 50 yard cast. I mean, it is what it is. But I'm mostly fishing from a boat now, so you don't really have to cast that far with a boat. You can take that big bait and drop it straight down sometimes and catch a big catfish that way. So they're great boat rods. If you're fishing from the bank, I would always suggest a surf rod or just don't worry about it. Put a big bait on one of these, toss it out there, and just, you know, see what you can catch. It's as easy as that. Now my uh, chair is squeaking a lot. <laughs> I probably need to uh, deal with that at some point. I am using some magic when I'm editing the video to get rid of any like extra noise. Because uh, I have a little fan going that I forgot to turn off. So I'm going to have to use some voice isolation on this video. It's a good job me. These podcast things are kind of new and old at the same time. And, you know, you're always learning. And I know I've been doing this for eight years. That does not make me a professional in any way. I'm still learning. I will still continue to learn and make mistakes. And hopefully I'll be able to color grade this video too. Because I'm using yet another camera. So leave a comment below if you think this looks bad. I mean... Just, you know, I, th I think it's probably going to look good. I did some test editing already, and, you know, a new camera's good. And now that I've got off topic, let's get back on topic. Yeah. I don't know. These have been good rods. I've had a lot, of, a lot of positive feedback, too. I've talked about these in the past. I've reviewed these in the past. Probably eight, as far as eight years ago, I've reviewed these. I've got old videos. From my old Sony camera, like this one. One that Catfish Dave was using a long time ago. Before he finally upgraded. He used this longer than I used this camera. And, uh, I did, you know, I caught fish with him. <laughs> caught fish from the bank. Literally, the video was, I, I, I went fishing at three rods out. I was like, I want to do a Battle Cat review. And all of a sudden... The big catfish ate the bait that was on the battle cat, which made it, you know, perfect for that video. So, just leave a comment below what you think about it. You know, I part of me does wish Akuma would continue making these as kind of a premium, unique rod. 
But the other side of me wants a medium heavy rod. So I will be getting a bunch of medium heavies as soon as I'm able to. And I will do reviews of them. And I will be fishing with them. And I will be taking clients with me while fishing with them. So if you wanted a hands-on anything, book a trip and sometime in the future. If you want about, you know, to see the battle cats in person, book a trip soon before I, you know, swap them out. But yeah. It's been it's been a good it's been a good run with these. You know, cork, I have not taken care of any of the cork handles. And you have to. You have if you want this to last 10 years, you have to take care of it. You have to oil it and everything. I don't take care of them. As if you've been, you know, subscribed to my channel and following me for the past few years, you know I go through rods more than I go through boats. And that's, that's saying a lot. But you can see, you know, at least on this rod, no issues. I, I'm, I think I have one or two that might have a chip here and there. I mean, I don't, I don't take care of my equipment. I throw it around. You've seen me probably on a few videos where, especially my carp videos, when I've got like three carp rods and they start getting in the way, I just throw them out of the way. So I, I you know, I just, I use my equipment and it shows. <laughs> but yeah, there's not much more I can say about this. These are uh, good rods. And I will miss them. But I'm also not opposed to trying something new in the future. Anyway, as always, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to actually watch this video or listen to this podcast. I know that this is really kind of a stretch of calling this a podcast. I call this a video podcast. I'm still going to upload the audio to various podcast sites. So if you're listening to this and you want to see the actual video, just go to my YouTube channel and you should be able to access it through my website, tnrvg.com. Right? Yeah, yeah, tnrvg.com. And you can check out my discounts page there. I've got a discounts page. I don't have any discounts for Akuma yet. So if you get one of these at a super, one of these battle cats at a really cheap cost on Akuma's website, I get nothing, which is fine. You get a lot. It's almost 50% off. So I would go grab them as soon as possible. But I, I really don't get anything from the website, which is fine. But I do have discounts and discount codes for others on that website. My guide service, I talk about my guide service. And there's a little bit of background about me on there as well. So, yep. I will, like I said, miss that rod. Thanks again for watching or listening. I hope to see you next time.